Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's Advanced Excel Quick Trainer, we're going to discuss the Goal Seek feature. The target audience is students or those working in the science or engineering fields. For fast reviewing, put your play speed on 2x and or jump the chapters of interest in the timeline below. First up, what is Goal Seek? So what is Goal Seek? First some definitions. Goal Seek is a process that iterates backward on your formulas to find the input that arrives at your desired output. So you have one cell that's an input and you have, you could have multiple worksheets, whatever, and eventually all those formulas tie into one output cell. And Goal Seek lets you identify in the output cell, I want this value, Excel, go apply Goal Seek, run iterations on the input cell to find the value that arrives at the desired output value. That's what Goal Seek's all about. It's also called what-if analysis or back solving. And it's always done rapidly in memory. The depiction of the right would never actually be written to a sheet. In my example here, that would never be done by Goal Seek, all of this stuff would be hidden. I set up an equation that's uh, distance equals rate times time. And I set up my output cell of 125 miles and I have a value of 55 miles an hour for my rate in the formula. And then I want Excel to iterate and figure out what the time is that it will take at 55 miles an hour to arrive at 125 miles travel. And so Excel would start, If let's say that uh, I put a value of 2.195 down in here, and that was my starting guess. Excel would just iterate and boom, 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 run through all of these, and it would increment, 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 and then it would eventually arrive at the answer we want. And sometimes it'd go high, sometimes it'd go low. It would just be bouncing all around in memory, but it might go through 10,000 iterations instantly and within one or two seconds and arrive at the value that we're looking for. Now this is an oversimplified example. You could just do this in your head or just do a formula. But when you have complex worksheets, that's where the power of Goal Seek really comes in. So where's Goal Seek located in Excel? Well, you go to the menu, item data, and in the toolbar, you go to the forecasting section and then the what if analysis button. And when you click that, there's a Goal Seek option from the dropdown. So you click that. And then up pops a dialog box for Goal Seek. And there's a set cell. You pick the cell you want to set, that's your output cell, to a value, 175, by changing the cell, C8. So you have an input cell, an output cell, and a value that you want the output cell to change to by Excel iterating on the value in the input cell. And we'll look at examples. It's kind of confusing hearing it that way, but when we look at examples, it'll make more sense. So now some goal seat concepts. Over here we have a sample rate times time equals distance formula and we have goal seek set up. And the target cell here in red highlight, there's always only one set cell formula. And the goal, there's always only one value. We want to set that distance to 124.75. So up here we had our set cell, one of those, to this value by changing this cell. And there's always only one that's calculated. So back to the beginning. Set this cell to this value by changing that source cell. And Excel up here has a, it's just a really simple formula, but it can be much more than that. Think of it as a black box. Think of this spreadsheet down here as a table with 10,000 cars and it's calculating an average speed and plopping it into here and then we're doing goal seek based on that average speed to see what would it have to be in order to arrive at some time or some different distance. So that's the way to think of goal seek, not just as one sheet, simple formula, but you can have multiple sheets underneath doing all kinds of complex stuff. You have a summary page here and you set up your goal seek to have Excel iterate on an input to drive the page down here. So the set cell formula target can reference dozens of other cells and formulas. It can reference other worksheets. It's basically you roll up an entire engine of cell values, formulas, and interrelated worksheets onto a summary sheet and then drive it from goal seek, drive all that engine, that black box from goal seek on a summary sheet. And you can put some graphs and charts on there too and have like a dashboard that's driven by goal seek and do your what if analysis from that dashboard, 
with multiple pages underneath. Uh, I've done it for reserve studies and other things where you have multiple years and all kinds of calculations and estimates about what needs to be fixed. And then your summary page, you just have some inputs, inflation, interest rate, and some other assumptions that are made. And then you can goal seek on that and play what if scenario. So very powerful if you set it up properly. Next up, how do I adjust goal seek precision? So how do I adjust goal seek precision or why? Well, you want to make goal seek more accurate and sometimes prevent errors like we're going to see later in this uh, presentation. And to do that, you click the file menu in Excel. You click the options menu. You click the formulas sub-menu, and then over here in the maximum change, you can change it from the default 0 0.001. If you're doing really uh, fine-tuned calculations with tiny numbers, you may have to do 0 0.0001, or you might even have to do 1 to the E minus 20 or something like that. But just be aware that this option exists, File, Options, Formulas, Maximum Change. And then when you're done, click OK to save the change. Next up, example one, how to calculate road trip speed using Goal Seek. So on my little electronic sheet of graph paper here, I've set up a road trip with four legs. And let's see, I want to draw with that. Yep. So there's leg one, which is three miles of city driving, speed limit of 30 miles an hour. Leg two is 153 miles with a uh, speed of 70 miles an hour. Leg three is four miles, the delta, 160, 56, and it's at 40 miles an hour. And then the final leg four here is just two miles at 30 miles an hour because it's rural city. So city, highway, rural road, and rural city. And what we wanna do is draw mode here, move my cover plate, set up a little equation or a little chart that says, okay, leg one, three miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, three miles distance, 30 miles an hour, total time is six minutes because it's, you know, rate times time equals distance and convert hours to minutes. So, and then we copy paste it down. So we basically come out with 147 minutes total for the trip and 162 miles total covered. And what we want to do, uh, and the distance is fixed, but the speed can vary, but there's speed limits, so it probably shouldn't. And then the time can vary depending on the speed you drive. So what's our problem that we're trying to solve here? We're going to try and determine, using Goal Seek, how much would you need to speed in leg number two on the highway, the yellow, how much faster would you need to drive to cut off 17 minutes of the total trip time? And so we'll use Goal Seek to solve that. So let's get started. Let's go to the data menu item and forecast and what if analysis and Goal Seek. And up comes Goal Seek. And this table is the same table as what's up here. I just grayed out the elements that are not going to change. And I highlighted the elements we are going to change and look at. So we want to set our target cell cut 17 minutes off. Well, the time was 147. So we want to set this cell equal to 17 minutes less as 130 minutes by changing the speed at which we drive. So there we are. It's all set up. And then we click OK. Boom. Excel iterates through and arrives at we'd have to speed. Instead of 70, the speed limit, we have to go 80 miles an hour, 0.53. 10.53 over the speed limit. Almost guaranteed to get a ticket over that distance, so don't do it. <laughs> but if you're wondering how, you could use Goal Seek to iterate and it would run a whole bunch of combinations and arrive at the correct value just like that. So this dialog is up here. It did the what if scenario for us. I can hit cancel and watch the values. Boop, they revert back to the original. I could have hit OK and it would have left the changes in place. But I didn't want to. I wanted to leave the original value. So you really can do what if analysis on that. And then if you want to do another what if analysis, data, what if analysis, goal seek, reselect them and go again. Next up, example two. How to use goal seek to calculate the minimum grade necessary on a final. So for problem number two here, it is 
the end of the quarter and all your homework assignments have been completed and graded. So your homework's done, your quizzes are done, three of your exams are done. That's it, they're graded and done. There's nothing you can do, that's the past. You have one more shot at trying to get your grade up. And if we look at the average for all those assignments, it's 95.63 and it's weighted at 25% of your grade. So there's your points out of 25, you have that. Your quizzes are also weighted at 25% of your grade and you have 91%. So there's your points there. And for these three, fourth isn't yet incorporated into the average. For those three, 50% of your grade, you have 84. And if you add these all up, you're at 88.86. You're just below 90%. And the question we're trying to solve here with Goal Seek is what is the minimum score you can get on the final here in yellow and still receive 90% a 90% grade overall in the class? Now, we could go in and we could guess 87? No. 88? No. 90? No. What I'm doing is I'm changing this value iteratively and I'm watching at the impact what's happening down here. So 91 and so on. And you could keep going and going and going. Maybe you guess 94 and you go too high and then you got to go back and forth. And anyway, it's a lot of iterations. So a better way to do it is start with a value or actually no value. Let's leave it blank. Let's see what Excel does. We should give it a seed value that's a guess, but I'm going to have fun and then set it to zero and see how much longer it takes Excel to iterate on that. So here we go. We are going to go to data and forecast and what if analysis and goal seek. Drag this over here. Set cell. We want that cell, our target, to be 90%. Because that's an A. By changing this cell. And we hit OK and Excel iterates and iterates. <laughs> I said it, that wasn't too bad. It took forever because earlier I changed the increment to a tiny number and it went from zero and I had to iterate a whole bunch of times to get up here, but it arrived at 90% and it came to exactly 93.42. I have to get 93.42% on my final exam in order to get 90% in the class. So that's another example of goal seek. And finally, example number three using Goal Seek to calculate chemical concentrations of a reaction at equilibrium. For example number three of using the Goal Seek, my sister is a college professor of chemistry and this is a problem that she gives to her students to help them learn to use Excel and automate solving of problems. <clears throat> and it's going to involve the chemical equation at equilibrium of a given reaction. Iodine, bromine, and water mix them together and then they form some ions. I don't understand all the chemical stuff, but the equations and, and components and what's going on. But the yellow up here is the concentrations of the various components that are going in. And then the blue is the equation. And what we're going to do is solve for it. Now, if you really want to, you can pause the video and read what all these different figure abbreviations, acronyms, and chemicals are. But I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide, which is, what is the question we're trying to solve? Well, we want to know and use Goal Seek to determine what are the final concentrations of all species at equilibrium if our K constant is this value for the overall reaction. Well, what's a species? That's just these chemical components. And we're given the K value for the overall reaction that we want to arrive at. So we begin to solve the problem manually and set it up. And this is my sister's problem and all of her handwriting in the present slide for her class. And she sets it all up, figures out all the steps, figures out the different components. And if you're going to add or subtract you know, bromine and X is the concentration that you're going to guess and have solve or go solve. So I'm just going to move past this. But anyway, that's setting up the problem. And we're going to actually go execute this in Excel. What I'm showing you here in PowerPoint is just a kind of level set on the problem that we're going to tackle. So on the next slide, we are going to look at how you manually solve it and why you quickly realize that there's way too many iterations to do this manually. So she set up a trial one, did a guess for X at 0 
ran all the calculations to arrive at a Q value, and then realized that the Q value she calculated is less than the K value that we want to end up with. So she tried again twice, went to 0 0.099, and it's still less than. So then she tried again, 0 0.099, and it's greater than. So now we know it's between 9.9 .9 to the negative fourth and 9.99 .9 to the negative fourth. And anyway, she has to keep iterating and iterating and going above and going below and round and round we go. And <laughs> eventually it's like, oh, to get the level of precision you need for the chemical equation to solve it, you're going to have to iterate too many times. And that's why she mentioned to use Excel to automate this problem. So how do we lay out the problem in Excel? Well, we have the equation from the worksheet. Uh, there's an implied one, iodine, five, bromide, six, water, and then etc. So we have all these components and I color coded them to lay them out in Excel. So how many molecules? Well, there's two of this IO minus three and there's an initial constant. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, there's 10 of the bromide ions here after the reaction starts and then there's 12 each hydrogen ions and then on the left side there's five bromide ions so I'm getting set up by the count of the molecules and then the molecule name and actually I should have just done that so there's our five BRs there's our two IOs our 10 BRs and our 12 H's Next, the original question here in yellow, we break that down and want to put that into Excel. So we start off with the one, what is that, millimole? I'm not familiar with chemistry. So anyway, one millimole, <clears throat> we put our concentrations of millimoles here. That's an input. We're going to calculate in moles. We're going to change the units and be careful. <laughs> Some Units are in millimoles and some units, there it is, are in moles. And you really have to pay attention to these. It's easy to get to miss that. So anyway, we want millimoles in this column, moles in that column. We're just breaking down the inputs from the question. So the next one is five millimoles for bromine aqueous. Okay. And then uh, 20 millimeters for the bromine ion, bromide ion and one entire mole or a thousand millimoles for the hydrogen ion. So we set all of these up and previously all of these up from our input, uh, well not our input, from our problem statement that was given to us. And then we can calculate based on that and then we have more calculations that we're going to go through in a minute. Oh, this is interesting. I was trying to figure out why the iodine was, wasn't used, wasn't referenced, and why water wasn't. And so based on the question, I think it's because the iodine has an excess solid after the reaction is complete, I guess. I don't know the chemistry behind it, but I think that's why the iodine is just ignored. The I2, there's just extra left over. And then the water, maybe that's inert or something, and that's why it's not counted. I don't know. But I'd grade those out because they're not part of the uh, equation. Uh, there's our K equals constant that was given to us, and we're going to look at in a minute at the initial Q calculation. Okay, so now we're done with the level set in PowerPoint where we established what the problem was and how we're going to go about solving it in Excel. Now we're in Excel and we're going to go solve it. And I'm just going to mention that here's the defining the problem. You saw that in the PowerPoint. Here's the layout of the problem. And then here's where we're going to solve the problem. So really, does it fit? Uh, you know, I guess it barely fits at this resolution. I'm going to leave the layout of the problem here and then the solving of the problem. So column D, column D, those are raw values. That's a raw value, not a formula. Raw value, not a formula. Those are inputs. We saw that earlier. This is calculation. We're just converting millimoles to moles, divide by 1,000. You can just see it right there. Everything's divided by 1,000. That's our column E. Our column F is a little bit more involved. Uh, let's... There's two ways I can show the precedence. I mean, you can look up the formula, but that's a lot of stuff. So let me click in the formula, and nice. When I click in the formula, it highlights 
what the cells are that go into this. So E33 in blue, B33 in red times our input value down here. And I had an initial guess of 0 0.001673, and that's flowing through here. So that is our final concentration calculation. And it is taking the number of molecules times the concentration times our input x down here value. And it's using that all to calculate the final concentration in moles for the given, let me hit escape here, for the given species or chemical component. Notice the k constant down here. It's never going to change just an input value. Uh, and then the Q initial is actually calculation. And I put the calculations up here. This cell is equal to all that stuff. Oh, and notice the plus sign, and these are all minuses. It's because these are on the right side, and then that over it's the opposite direction. Anyway, just notice that. That'll catch you up if you don't get that right. And then the Q initial isn't going to use the X. It's going to use, well, let's just click in the formula and see. It's going to use these numbers here times the initial concentrations. It's not going to try and iterate and, and alter those. That's just our starting point, Q initial. And that is 2.56 to some tiny number to 07. Okay, so here's our, where's my mouse pointer go? Here's our input value, and here's our output value of Q. And that's what we're going to use Goal Seek to model on. Uh, and the Q equation, why don't I just show you that too? Click into it. The Q equation, so this Q initial, used the number of molecules and the initial concentration and, and used them all in, calculate, in a calculation. And it's, uh, let's see, 33, 34, 35, E, 33, 34, 35. These three on the right side are multiplied by each other, times each other, and then they're divided by this one here. So that is our Q initial. If I escape and click down here to our Q final, our Q output, the concentration that we want to arrive at and click in here, it is using the same molecules, but it's using the final concentration, which each of those, if I click in here, is involving number of molecules, our guess input, and then the initial concentration. So that is our model. And we are gonna use Goal Seek to try and set the Q value here equal to the equilibrium constant by having Excel iterate on this value over and over and over until it finds the answer. And you remember from the prior slides where my sister had gone through and manually calculated and calculated, it was a lot of iterations. So watch how quick Excel does this. So here we go. We're going to go hit data and forecast and what if and goal seek we want to set this cell, our Q value, equal to the K value. Unfortunately, I can't just click it, so I'm going to have to type it in 1e e to the minus 19 by changing our X value. And sorry, I don't know which is which. One is a concentration, and the other is the amount of the chemical it's consumed, and I just unfortunately don't understand the chemistry and it's been 30 years since I took a chemistry class, so my apologies. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, something happened, and, and I intentionally wanted to show you this. There's an error. It doesn't really look like there's an error, but our X didn't change, our Q didn't change, and we got something that says, Goal Seek found a solution, and the solution was zero. And <laughs> no, Goal Seek just aired out. It hit zero and stopped. And so what we need to do is do the second bullet point in this presentation. So we're going to go fix the precision. So let's hit cancel and let's go up to file and options. And my screen's so small you can't see it. And once I go to options, I want to go to formulas. That 0 .01, 0 0.0001, that's 1e to the minus 4. It's not enough. If my E va K value is going out to E to the 19. My sister had done research and found that you really need to go five beyond that. So Y E to the minus 24. 
Minus 19 there, 5 beyond it is 24. So, tiny number. We're going to hit OK. We're going to retry the goal seek, and it should work this time. Once again, set IQ value equal to 1E minus 19 by changing this X value here, and then hit OK. Pretty quick, it iterated through in one or two seconds. Goal seek found a solution. And this time it <laughs> it the goal seek's intended for finance and other business related things, so it's their dialogue box is accustomed to using a big number, not a tiny number. So the number it's using is so small you can't even see the one off of here. But the reason you know it worked is because the current value is different this value is different and our x value is different that's the one we wanted to iterate on it find we told goal seek to set q equal to k which it did by iterating on x and giving us an x so the actual x value is that that's what we're solving for that's the answer to this chemical equation so pretty neat now let me hit cancel and scroll down so if you get an error that was one possible source of the error, is that the precision isn't good enough. And the rule of thumb for my sister is that the iteration changes to 10 to the 5 times, 10 to the 5th times smaller than the desired calculated result. Another potential error is to choose a reasonable estimate. If you choose an estimate that's way off and put it in a negative number or something, the goal seeker will start to iterate, and then it may hit an error and stop. So always try to guess something that's relatively close, and then Goal Seek will pick it up from there and finish for you. And I think that wraps it up for our three examples for Goal Seek. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and be sure to subscribe below. Also be sure to check out our related videos in the boxes to the left.